Hey everyone, let's learn how to quickly create the volumetric fog in Blender. This is gonna work both in Eevee and Cycles, so let's begin. So right here I have a small cave scene with Steve standing in front of some water. And by the way, I have a tutorial about the water shader as well if you want to check it out. And I'm using the ice cube rig right here and the link will be in the description. So to create the fog effect, we first need to create a cube and then add some textures to the cube. So first I'm going to bring my cursor over here. So I'm going to do shift right click and then go shift A, mesh, and then let's create a cube. And then we need to scale up this cube to a size which covers the whole scene. So I'm going to scale this up until it covers the entire scene. I'm going to go to solid view so that it's not lagging. And then I can scale this up somewhere over here, probably. Now, if I go in my camera view, by an amp head zero, or you can also use this button to go inside your camera. I need to scale up my cube even more. So I think this size should be enough. And then you can organize your cube if you want. For example, I'm going to click on M, click on new collection name this fog and then let's move my cube in the fog collection so that i have more control and over it and then it's more organized now what i'm going to do is i'm going to split the screen so that we can work on the texture right here and then we can preview the texture on the side so i'm going to go up here uh, until i see these two arrows i'm going to do right click vertical split left click to confirm now over here i'm going to click this and then go inside the shader editor and i'm going to click on end to get rid of this menu the first thing we need to do is create a new texture and also to preview this texture, uh, I can be in the EV. So if you have a good GPU, you can preview this in cycles as it's going to work in cycles as well. But I'm going to use EV and I'm going to go inside rendered view. And by the way, I have these settings enabled as you can see. So I have ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections and motion blur. And if you turn on these settings, the water is going to be more reflective. You're going to go have some glow and it's, it's going to make your scene look a lot nicer. So right here on the left side where I'm in the shader editor, I'm going to click on new to create a new material. And then let's name this something like volumetric fog. Naming your stuff and organizing your stuff is very, very good because it's going to help you in the future. So right here, I have this principal BSDF node, which is the default node, which is created when you're making materials. Then I'm going to left click this and then I'm going to click on delete to delete this node. And then I'm going to click on shift A. And then we're going to create the principled volume node. So let's create the principled volume and then left click to confirm. Now I'm gonna plug my volume into the volume here, not surface, but volume. So make sure volume is plugged into the volume. And as you can see, my scene is now covered with the fog, which is a lot. So I can click on the density right here and then turn this up to some, turn this down to something like 0.03. And now it got smaller, but this is not enough. So if you want like a foggy render, then I think you can keep this. But if you wanna make this cooler, we can add a few more nodes and then make a few adjustments and keyframe them and it's going to look a lot nicer. So first thing we can do is create a noise texture because noise texture is going to give us more control. It's going to make this a lot cooler. So I'm going to click on Shift A, search, and then let's search for the noise texture. Left click to confirm. Now what I'm going to do is if I want to have more control over the noise texture, I want to add the mapping and texture coordinate nodes. So if you don't have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, then make sure you go to Edit, Preferences, go to Add-ons, search for node wrangler and then as you can see we have the node wrangler right here and i make sure it's enabled and then turn off the preferences now i'm going to left click to select my noise texture and then i'm going to click on Control t right here you can see the shortcut Control t and then i created a mapping and texture coordinate node now i'm going to switch this to generate from generated to object and then i'm going to click on Control shift and then left click on the noise texture and this is going to preview the noise texture it's going to preview what this noise texture does so if I'm going to go outside my camera view, right here, you can see what the noise texture does. So if I play around with the noise texture settings, you can see that it's changing right here. So first thing we need to do is if we want to animate the noise texture in the future, we want to change this from 3D to 4D. So I'm going to click on 4D. And then let's keep the W value at like zero. So this W value is going to allow us to animate the noise texture after we're done setting up the material. So if I left click and drag this up, you can see it's changing. It's like a random seat, basically. It's changing its shape. So if you animate this, it's going to look really, really cool. So for now, let's keep this at zero. Let's turn up scale even more to something like 14, for example. I'm going to click on 14. We can keep the roughness as 0.5, but if you turn up the turn on the roughness, you can see what this does. You can see if I turn it down, it's going to be less rough. If I turn it up, it's going to be more rough. But I like to keep this at 0.5 on default. I like to turn up the detail all the way up and then we can keep these two settings by default. 
Now I'm going to take the factor of the noise texture and unplug it from the surface because we don't really need to preview it anymore. And then what we can do is add one more node. So first take the factor of the noise texture and plug this into the density. And then if you want to have even more control over, first I'm going to well, left click and drag these and select both of these nodes. Left click to move them around over here. And then I'm going to click on Shift A, search, and then let's search for the color ramp node. One of the most frequently used nodes. So if I left click and then drag this on this line, over this line, it's going to jump between these two nodes. So if I move around the color ramp, I'm going to have more control over the fog. So if I drag this black value, left click and drag this over here, you can see the fog becomes more visible, it has more gaps, and it looks a lot cooler. If I also take this white value and drag this, you can see it's changing the shape again. And if I move this closer, it's going to be more full, fuller. If I drag this on the right side, it's going to have more gaps. I can also take this white value. If you want to, you can also make this darker. But don't make it too dark because your fog is not going to be visible after that. So as you can see, we have this cool looking fog created. You can play around with the settings more. And now if you want to animate this, first of all, before I animate this, I have this end frame set to 120. It's four seconds because I have 30 FPS set over here. And as I told you in the beginning, I have enabled the settings. I made occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections. And by the way, if you switch to cycles, this is also going to work in cycles. It might look a bit different, but you're still going to have fog and it's going to look really, really cool. Uh, right here, as you can see, the cycles is really, really laggy for me. I'm going to go to the viewport and then turn up the samples to something like 30 and then enable denoising again. And as you can see, I have fog in cycles as well, but it's pretty slow. So I'm going to switch back to Eevee. Now what we can do is animate the fog, obviously, as I said many, many times during this tutorial. So first thing we need to animate is the location on the mapping. We need to animate the X and Y location, and then also we can animate the W value. Now first thing we need to do is uh, select the noise texture, and then make sure you enable the auto keyframe function over here. You can click on this, enable this button, go to keying, and then change this to location and rotation. So that every time you set a keyframe, you have to press an I and then change the interpolation and all of that. So you need to press an I in the beginning only. So I'm going to select the noise texture, go on the frame 0, frame 1, whichever is your starting frame. Hover over the W value. You can right click, insert, and click on insert keyframe. And as you can see, it's showing you the shortcut for this is I. So if I also hover over it and press an I, it's going to set a keyframe. I think in new Blender versions, the shortcut was changed to K, but I'm not sure. So if I download new Blender versions, I'm still going to change the set keyframe to I because I'm used to pressing I to set a keyframe. Now, once you set a keyframe over here, we can go to something like frame 100, for example, and then change this to 1. I can drag this up, or I can just type here, and then change this to 1. Now, if I play back my animation, it's not going to be visible until I render it. It's going to be visible slightly. So, if I play back, you can see what happens. The mist or the fog is moving around. Now, I can do the same thing for the location, but the first thing we need to do is make sure you have your noise texture selected. Press on A, hover over your timeline, press on A, select all the keyframes and press on T and then let's make this linear so that's going to be a linear interpolation and the animation is going to be more evenly distributed we don't need the Bezier movement uh, in terms of the fog so if I play around once again if I scrub through the timeline you can see the fog is moving around now I can also hover over the location value and then press on I it's going to set a keyframe for all transforms now go to frame 100 and then let's change this to something like 0.2 in this case, in this case, I have a water shader, which is moving from left to right. So if I want this fog to move from left to right as well, I can select this again. So I can left click, drag down, and then set this to minus 0.2. But in your scene, I don't think you have to set this to minus 0.2 because you don't have the water. But if I scrub through the timeline, you can see my water is moving from left to right mostly. So if I scrub through, my fog is also going to move from left to right. And the last thing we need to do is select the mapping and shift select the noise texture as well. Hover over the timeline, press on A, make sure all of your keyframes are selected. First, make sure they're all linear once again. And then what we need to do is click on shift E and then click on linear extrapolation. And now if I scroll through the timeline and go past frame 100, you can see the fog is still going to be moving around and the linear, extra uh, linear extrapolation is going to make the animation go on forever, basically. So however many frames you set here, your animation is going to go forever without you having to set a keyframe once again. So now we're ready to render the animation. Like if I press on spacebar and let this animation play, it's not going to be visible. But if I 
use my mouse, left click and drag around and scroll through the timeline, you can see the fog is more visible and it's moving around a lot better and I can pre with this a lot better. If you want to see how it's going to look, you obviously you can render out the scene. So now everything is ready to render. Make sure you have your output set. Uh, make sure you have your render settings correct. I'm going to turn this to something like 50 samples. And then it's ready to be rendered. I'm going to render this out and I'm going to come back to you guys. Now I preview this render quickly and I think that setting this from 0 to 1 is a bit too fast. So while you have your W at 0 on frame 0, you can go to your last frame, which is frame 100, and set this to something like 0.2. Because setting this to 1 is a bit too fast. And now I can re-render my animation once again and we can watch it once again. So there you go. As you can see, we just created this fog effect. Then you can play around with the settings. You can make this anywhere. You can make this outside the cave, inside the cave, just anywhere you want. And also, if you want to learn how to make this water shader right here, then you can check out this video. And I will see you there. Thank you for watching.